Over to Gina. Okay, well, thank you, Keith and Ronnie, for the invitation to talk. Um, so, this is a tale of two places, two higher education institutions, both distributed, although in radically different ways. The first, a regional university consisting of a number of partner colleges, an institution differenced by geography, making it a university that is at times tricky to locate, which functions in a between space facilitated by technology, a generative matrix, which I have dubbed a transversity. The second, an art school named after its city, vibrant and diverse, but with a strong, singular and carefully managed external identity an art school which has migrated into China, Singapore and the Highlands and Islands of Scotland. Overlaid with this is the tale of a person caught between two very different institutional practices, caught between what has been said and what is now done. While working in a geographically distributed institution, my thoughts on the Leakey University emerged from pragmatism, Pragmatism, in a sense, the need to find solutions to the pedagogical challenges associated with studio-based learning via distance delivery. Like bricolars, we found the tools to do the job. The institutional social networking site, Blackboard 9, site visits, telephone tutorials, migrations of staff and students. I became interested in the notion that the university leaks into non-institutional settings to places not normatively considered to be part of the university or art school, that universitas embodied a certain plurality of place. I observe that the geographical spread of the leaky university problematized the organizational and fact faculty structures there was a subtle, if unintended, challenge to the relation between power, knowledge and the fabric of the university. I believed that the walls of the institution were porous, that there was a genuine institutional motility at play. I thought that what we were doing challenged the normative structures of the institution and the hierarchies of learning. The university, and by extension, the studio wasn't just a locus, a place. It expanded beyond its physical demarcations to the telephone, to inter interactive web technology, to video conference, to conversation. Erit Rogoff's words to describe the Academy project, a project in which the spaces of learning and exhibiting are refracted through one another, resonated with me. For Rogoff, academy does not mean institution, but a series of, quote, processes and speculations which are resistant to outcome-driven education and its attendant marketization. Thinking through academy as process and speculation enabled me to consider the institution as action and interaction the dispersed university as a way of doing, studio as a series of interlocutions and interventions rather than simply a place to study and make. In the period between then and now, something happened to me. The leaky university traversing the Highlands and Islands became a place of the past and the art school in the city of Glasgow became a place of the future. I forced myself to ask the question, just how leaky is the art school in the city? How is leaky or porous characterized in this place? What can leaky mean here? How should I think of the geographical migrations of the art school? A certain paralysis of thought settled like ash. It became hard to know what to think. I began to wonder, if we do in fact collectively produce our institutions, or are we merely the products of them? 
was I turning into what I spot Neil Mulholland calls in his provocation, a fash idiot. <laughs> the installation of a fairly new security system at Glasgow uh, School of Art seen in the slide has become laden with political significance. Coming from elsewhere, where the dialogue about security had been moving slowly, it seemed to me that these barriers have become to act as a powerful motif of the problems in higher education today. Rightly or wrongly, but perhaps understandably, these security systems have come to stand for the de development of the commercialised institution with a carefully managed public face often at odds with its own ethos and character, the marketization of education, socio-economic segregation, high levels of educational select selectivity, a lack of public accessibility, and unequal representation within the institution. For me personally, the barriers became a powerful visualization of the futility of the leaky university the par paralysis which had seized my mind grew from a sense of defeat, a nagging doubt that perhaps it is hopeless to continue to believe in the productive porosity of universities and art schools. Is it too much for us to ask that our institutions are accessible and open? Perhaps it is too late for us to consider that there might be other ways of structuring our activities and undermining the hierarchies at play in our institutions too much to ask that we might reflect carefully on the architectonics of power that say so much about who we seem to collectively think we are. It was only by once again reading with Rogoff that I began to shake the panic-induced paralysis and focus on the door slightly ajar to the right of my slide. I reread Rogoff's Academy as Potentiality and was reminded of one of its key precepts. She writes, in thinking academy through potentiality, academy becomes the site of a duality, of an understanding of I can as alre always already yoked to an eternal I can't. Potentiality is a duality which for Rogoff is inescapable, but not paralyzing. I can choose to act but then again, I can choose not to. She goes on to say, if educating is forever reacting to the woes of the world, we hope to posit that education is and of the world, not a response to crisis, but part of its ongoing complexity, not reacting to realities, but producing them. I find myself at a kind of crossroads what is at stake if one does not act on the potentiality of academy? What if I choose I can't? How do we, in Rogoff's words, begin to in inhabit these problems of higher education differently? What we say is important, but if art school is action and interaction, it is what we do that matters.